All right, guys, good morning, good evening, good day, however you want to do it. Um, today, we're going to talk about middle aged adult years. So, your middle, sorry, middle adulthood, which is between your 40s up until your 59. All right. So, today we get to talk about midlife crisis, which is fun. So, yesterday, my uh, lecture went for 40 minutes, which I will apologize for, and we will go much faster through this one. All right. So, bell ringer, make sure you do them every day. And we're going to talk about the fun transition of life that is also very stressful because if you haven't figured it out by now, uh, life is pretty stressful. But this middle transition from your late 30s, you start to kind of look at your life and what did you actually do? Did you do something worthwhile? Have you wasted it? Whatever. So people start to really look and re-examine their life at this point, okay? There's often a sense of urgency uh, to make sure you're doing something meaningful, Okay. And the other thing is you start to notice physical declines and signs of aging. All right, I talked about this yesterday. In your 30s, most people start to begin weight or don't work out as much or whatever. And again, this can help increase or not increase or uh, make this kind of aging process happen sooner. But also, too, you do start to physically age. After you're about mid-30s, you don't, uh, you're kind of like on a downward slope, so to speak age-wise. You start to age. You start to feel your age. All right. This can lead people to a midlife crisis, guys. Some of it has to do with the fact that you have a pretty good idea who you are by the time you hit your 20s, right? We've talked about identity. We've, you know, talked about what your purpose are. You have all this, as they would say, spit and vinegar. You're ready to go into the workforce. And then you get in the workforce and you kind of drudge on year after year. And for some people, they do eventually lose their purpose. Have they been living the right values? Are they insecure about their future? Have they saved retirement? We're going to talk about retirement uh, tomorrow and how that can definitely hurt you. But again, you might be dissatisfied where you are. Now, I want to be clear. Not everyone goes through this. Some people, uh, regardless of what happens to them in life, always know who they are and they don't go through this process. But others hit a real like midlife crisis. All right. That is not a made up thing. Let me make sure I go there. All right. So again, understand it. And I know I've said this before. I don't like hitting gender norms too hard outside of the gender unit. And some of that has to do with the fact that gender itself is changing. Um, not necessarily what your gender is, but the idea that women stay home, and provide for the, uh, you know, and take care of the children and men go provide for the family. Um, these ideas of what is a man's role and what is a woman's role is changing in our society. So don't get caught up in that. But I will say what is true is that there does seem to be a larger focus on women focusing on family before careers versus men, especially in early adulthood. But you kind of start to see this switch. In middle adulthood, women start to focus more intensely on their careers. Their children are teenagers or out of the house. Uh, they have time now. They're not running all over the place. So they kind of switch. And then where in middle adulthood, men start to re-examine, have I spent enough time with my kids? They're going to leave soon, so on and so forth. So you start to see this flip in what priorities are between men and women. The other thing that's interesting is in your middle adult years, uh, you start to see men become more emotionally expressive, all right? It, it's funny because women are actually better at identifying emotions and relating to emotions than men are, but they do seem to mellow out in their 40s and 50s and they become more expressive emotionally. Um, they start to care more, not necessarily they didn't care about their relationships, but they put a lot more value into their relationships and they start uh, put it more than their careers. Where on the other hand, now women are becoming more independent, they're more assertive, and they're determined necessarily to make it go out on their own, not be defined by that kind of mother and wife role they've been defined by for so long. Again, I don't know if this will hit your generation as hard as it's hit some of the previous ones, but just keep in mind when we talk about gender norms and what people do, it is okay that if you want to conform to your gender norms, just understand, you know, that some of that stuff is changing a little bit. All right. So this side, this flip-flop of roles can cause conflict. And so outside of young adulthood, the next most common time for people to get divorced is actually in their 40s and 50s. Because for most people, this is where their relationship is at an all-time low. All right. And they get this high divorce 
great, all right? One sixth of divorces occur in people 45 years and older. It's kind of crazy thinking they've been married so long, but do understand when you put priorities like your children and your career and stuff in front of another person, it causes issues in a relationship. All right, so by 50, by your middle 50s, a lot of men start to consider their spouse or their women as the more dominant, powerful partner, which is kind of cool. Also, too, though, like the good news of this time period, people usually mellow out. So if they were really aggressive as, you know, a young kid, they start to kind of calm down and become more settled and happy. So you get through that midlife crisis and, you know, your 30s and 40s. By the time you're 50, you've mellowed out and gone from there. All right. Um, this leads also to a period known as empty nest period. All right. So understand change of culture has impact on us psychologically in the turn of the night of the 20th century, you know, women, uh, who were widowed really only, um, lived maybe two or three years after their last child was born. Uh, the other thing too, is they, weren't really looked down upon. After you kind of go through menopause and you no longer could bear children in that culture, you were not really seen as maybe more than a caretaker for the younger generations. Uh, so they had kind of limited things that they could do. Now, when we look at women, um, when they fi they can they finish motherhood and they still have about 45, 40% of their lives left and will likely be married for another 10 or 20 years even after their children have left the house. So there's still a ton of time left after your kids leave. And this is the empty nest, all right? Depending on the person, some studies show that women are more dissatisfied and depressed because now they don't, you know, they feel useless that their children are gone. Other studies show that marriages and lifestyle improve greatly. So I guess it just kind of depends on your outlook on life. If you are excited because now you get to have the space to yourself and whatever, you probably have a more positive outlook versus someone who's really distraught their child is leaving them. All right. We can't talk about this age group without talking about menopause. And I know some of you boys are probably not super excited to hear about this, but if you do decide to get married to a woman, um, understand this is a natural process that she will eventually have to go through. Your parents, your mother will actually have to go through this or whoever your guardian is if they haven't already. All right. And all this is, is a time where women stop being able to ovulate. All right. Um, and it causes a lot of horrible, horrible symptoms like dizziness, insomnia, night sweats, acne, uh, mood swings. It's crazy. And it's not just like it happens overnight. No, this can take a couple years depending on the person. Um, so usually sometime in your late 40s, early 50s, you go through this phase and then you can no longer have children. All right. Um, Understand, too, that after going through this, uh, women are at a higher risk of developing heart disease and brittle bo bone disease. Um, you can take hormones to help alleviate this, but depression does go up. Anytime you mess with hormones, guys, and it doesn't matter, this is a male or a female thing. Anytime you mess with somebody's hormones, it can raise an increase, it can increase their chance of becoming depressed. All right. So just understand, like, hormones are really important to how we balance ourselves mentally and uh, can really mess with you. So, so do understand that some of these uh, symptoms are due to hormone fluctuation. All right. So I'm not going to go into this. Don't worry about it. And that gets us to our activity, okay? So you are not going to actually illustrate this. Um, I'm going to – I've already uh, – let me go over to what you're going to do. Okay, so what what's going to happen is I'm, I made you a slide. So it's not that you're going to illustrate a man or a woman. Um, give me one second. I'm in the wrong class. You are going to create a slide and give me five facts about this time frame. All right, that a middle aged person would go through, and you'll find a picture. All right, I don't know why that's not letting me go down. Uh, you're going to find a picture of a middle-aged person it doesn't matter if it's a boy or a girl you can do both honestly and you will come up with the facts either from the slide deck or from google all right so 
it is not pl uh, playing nice with me. I'm not going to stay on here too much longer. Just understand that you are going to um, just create a slide deck for it. So you don't need to draw anything uh, from there. So let, let me show you what I got going for you guys for here. Um, mind you, this is my thing. So it's, yeah, you're just going to make a poster. And by poster, I mean you are going to do a Google slide for it. Um, yep. And turn it in. It should be, should already have it on there. I'll double check that tonight. Make sure that it has the Google slide on there for you. All right, guys, that's it for me. Um, Y'all have a good day. You can start uh, clicking off now. It's going to take me a second to sign off of this. But, yeah, it should be a pretty easy 